Hi, this is John Blyler, Editorial Director for System Level Design, and uh, today I'm at DAC 2016, and I'm at the S2C um, FPGA Prototyping uh, Solutions Group, and I have the pleasure of speaking to Toshio Dakama, I hope I said that right, the CEO. Yes, hi John, it's my pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. My pleasure as well. Let's get started. Most of, uh, most of us have used FPGAs at one time, uh, especially prototyping if we're doing any kind of ASIC. Um, but, you know, in recent years, software and actually testing has become a, a big part of that activity that, you know, some of us may not appreciate. Um, can you speak to those trends? Yes, I, I see a growing trend of FPGA-based prototyping used in all different applications. Um, the truth is that FPGA has um, advanced a lot. so. Doing APG prototyping is a lot easier than in past days, and plus all the tools have been advanced. So APG prototyping is almost a must for almost all projects nowadays. Let's um, and let's explore that a little more then. And some of these projects, and certainly if at DAC here, but I mean in, in our world, everyone's talking about IoT and talking about automotive, but just to pick a few. Um, how is that, um, is there any new, uh, new emphasis there? Is there any new things that engineers now have to worry about when they're using FPGAs? Yeah, uh, definitely. I think uh, all this earlier you just mentioned about like IOTs, uh, there are growing needs for FPGA prototyping because of a uh, growing amount of t software developments, especially early software development before the chip is available, and be able to, uh, to uh, dem dem demonstrate the systems and testing, uh, especially with different uh, partners. A lot of time, all these projects are um, not developed by one, uh, one one party. They actually cross um, different uh, companies and different geographic locations. Uh, and the only way to be able to co-work together is actually having something that works as a prototype that we can much, mutually uh, work together to be able to do that. What, let's just switch a little bit about uh, talk about trends. You know, I talked about IoT and, and automotive. Um, is there one really sweet spot that, that you see coming up where, you know, th uh, the, uh, the FPG FPGA is going to play a, a bigger role? Yeah, I think there are a whole range of, yeah, a whole range of applications that would, that, that, that would, that would, be, that would be good. For example, it's like automotive that uh, uh, needs strict, uh, very strict uh, uh, functional safety requirements, needs lots of testings and thorough uh, thorough testing and a lot of time right now the software guys are developing using software models It's like C models, but they are not 100% accurate and then maybe also slow for development So a lot of customers are using uh, FPGA pro prototyping to uh, have accurate model for software development guys and those are the sweet spots That's, That seems like an ex excellent point. I I've been covering automotive a little bit lately and with the Things like ISO uh, 26262, the emphasis on functional um, reliability, functional safety, even a little bit of security in there. You're going to have to. It's good to you have to have the simulation, but you've really got to make sure that it works, right? So, and that's a new. I would think that's a new audience too, because the automotive space is still kind of getting comfortable with electronics and hardware and software. Is is that true? Yeah, it's totally true. I mean, the, the amount of software guys are increasing. I mean, it used to be like seven to one, but I think nowadays, like for automotive, you have one, one company doing a chip, and you have whole, whole many companies actually supplying the, the firmware, the software, and systems for that chip. So definitely, yes. OK, Toshio, what, what do we have going on here? Okay, so here we have um, a system that um, consists of three FPGA boards, so we can prototype a bigger design. Of course, this can scale up. Uh, we can put in a, uh, up in, a, in, a, in a big chassis for up to 32 FPGAs, but here's just a showing three FPGA linking together. And then uh, it's very scalable, and we can put in a lot of different, uh, depending on your application, different data cards, uh, such as um, uh, USB, HDMI, and, and things like that. And then, and then we also have um, the software to map the whole your design, partition the design to put in uh, in the systems, uh, including um, inserting pin multiplexing uh, technology. Just because when you partition the design, you have limited number of IOs, and we supply all the uh, the software and technology to enable you to map the whole design here. 
And after you uh, put your design here, we also have a demo showing how you can do multi-APG debug, which is uh, it's very difficult to do if you don't have the right software. Usually you can only do debugging in one APG, but here we're also showing that you can do multi-APG debug. And then for, 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 for this demo, we actually, the, the, the data input is from the PC. We send it through PCI, PCIe video uh, streams. Um, uh, we are actually running at a uh, very high speed, one, one gigahertz uh, throughput. The data, data coming in, we do some processing and, and send the image out to the, to, to the PC. And that, we also have a product called Portal Bridge, which links the prototype to your simulation environment or to your, your, your test bench as a C, a system C.